Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF Fix It Friday. I uh, got a good episode today, a couple things to talk about. Uh, first off, real quick, I want to start off with a, uh, a really good tip for you. And let me take you over here and show you what. Now, one of the about. best shop accessories you can have, and I use this almost every single day, is a bottle of alcohol. Uh, they call it rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, but um, I put it in a spray bottle and I use this all the time for paint prep, for cleaning. I'll tell you, I use it every single day. And now, here's the thing. If you look around, a lot of uh, rubbing alcohol, like this one, is 50%. You can see it here. It says 50% uh, rubbing alcohol. Uh, that's 50% alcohol, like 50% uh, water. Uh, this one here, it says it's a 70-30 uh, a mix. You see, 70-30 blend. And uh, But this is the one I buy. Um, this one here I refilled. I always keep 90% in there. This is hard to find, but you can find them uh, when you look around. 91% or 90% isopropyl alcohol. This is the one you get. And I put it in a spray bottle and I use it for everything. Cleaning, like I said, paint prep uh, for like a degrease. It's just it's such a good thing to have. You don't have to worry about getting it on yourself. It's not a, a chemical that will harm you. And if you should get cut or something in the shop, you just spray it down. Great thing to have. Make sure you try and get one and try and get one 90%. Uh, this runs $1.75. This is usually the cheaper stuff. You can get this for, you know, 75 cents to a dollar because it's 50%. But try and get the 91% if you can. At, if worse comes to worse, get 70%. And you'll notice a okay, difference. Okay, let's start today's Fix It Friday with a fix. This is something I picked up at Jacktown. So let's now, check this was it out. the most expensive thing I bought at Jacktown. And uh, what it is, it's a Starrett punch set and i've always you know i'm a punch guy and i i like these but um these are regular uh pin punches but uh, one is broken here actually two are broken the small ones which is very common with these and you can find other ones but uh you could see they're in decent shape we're going to clean them up but uh it, i always like this wood case that it came in but these two here these two are broken you could see the tips but what we're going to do is we're going to quick uh, do a quick grind on here and make these still usable, but they're shorter. They won't be a pin punch, but they'll still be a punch. So let's okay. Get here's the uh, set of the uh, case that it came in, and uh, obviously these ones are all in good shape. But these are the ones here that need some addressing. These are the ones here that uh, have some slight damage to it. This one here is uh not only is it a little bit bent i could see from spinning it but also the knurling look you could see the knurling there's not much you could do it's real damage but we'll take it over to the wire brush and see if we can't uh just get that to look a little bit better and then we'll put this in the lathe and and see what we could do as far as straightening it out now if you notice the top here it's a little damaged you can see it's uh starting to mushroom a little bit so we're going to take care of that right away. Uh, just hit it real quickly on the, uh, the belt sander and get rid of that. Okay, we got rid of the mushrooming. Everything looks good. The knurling's, uh came out okay and uh, cleaned up the tip. Now we're going to put it into the lathe and straighten out the punch. Okay, we have it mounted in the lathe and you'll see how much it's out here. Uh, see that little wobble? Well, we're going to get rid of that. Okay, here's the setup. We have it in uh, in the chuck of the lathe, and we're going to turn. You can see here, uh, we're about, I guess, about 42 thousandths out or something like that. You can see how much. That's the high spot right there. You can see as you get right there is the high spot, and over here is the low spot. So what we do is we bring it to the high spot, and then we're going to use this sweet Thor hammer. Uh, my friends from the UK know this brand. This has a... Um, rawhide side and a copper side we're just going to tap down on this until we get this so that it's uh pretty much as close as we can uh to being true okay here we are at about five thousand south i think that's good to go let's check it out okay there we go that's the one that's uh pretty much straight let's work on these tips okay this is what the tips look like before you see one's chipped here uh, actually, they're both chips, so let's get working. Okay, here are the new reground tips. 
they look good everything's good back in the case okay next up i paid this is the second most expensive item i bought i paid nine dollars for this it's a dead-on hammer i never had one of these before and <clears throat> this hammer is one of the longest hammers i have this hammer measures in at 18 inches long and it's uh it's got some beautiful lettering in here it can't be too old it's got one of these stickers on here i guess that when you sew but look at the intricate castings around here you know like back here i know that's a magnetic to hold the nails but look at these slots here and it seems to be a high grade steel uh the front of it has the waffling face i don't know if i keep that i don't usually use that um but you see all the interesting cutouts and reliefs it i just thought it was an interesting hammer i know it's you know <laughs> believe me I got an, a, a lot of really nice hammers, but uh, the, the handle isn't in bad shape. And uh, I don't know. I just thought there was something about it. I said, boy, this would make a, a pretty nice project. I don't know why I I kind of took to it so much, but I uh, thought with the lettering and everything, it might look good. So let's get to it. Let's see what we can do. Take it to the wire brush and and uh, and get some of this some of this deep rust off. now you remember the tin can trick cut up a tin can aluminum can into uh small pieces like this put some tape on the edges here and wrap it around here so we do not touch this is important we don't want to get the wire brush onto the rubber here so pull this tight around here and you can see that'll protect the rubber from the wire brush and we do that on both sides <laughs> Okay, in the middle of wire brushing, I noticed that we have a slight bend to it. I did notice this yesterday, but uh, if you look at here, you can see there's a little bow bowing out towards the left. Do you see that? If we flip it, it's bowing towards the right. Can you see it right about here? So I guess we're going to have to go to the dake, give it a little quick squeeze, and hopefully that'll uh, straighten it right out. Okay, here we are at the dake, everybody's favorite. Now, here's the setup. We don't want to do any damage to... Uh, to the handle so we have it all on wood okay wood is very forgiving and uh, very strong believe it or not especially in, in the system we have here and what we're going to do is we're going to take a block of wood here put it right over where we think the bend is and uh, press it down i'll show you from the side okay you can see here here's where it looks like the bend is right over here looks like right about there so what we're going to do is we're going to take this block of wood it's nothing but a two by three and we're going to squeeze it down here and uh, hopefully that'll uh, press it out. Okay, here we go. Now it's gonna have to bend quite a bit more. Okay, and you see these things do flex a lot, you know? We don't even have a, a ton on there. We have about a half a ton, but you see how much flex there is in there. Now it's meant to flex, that's the way these are tempered. So now we'll bring it up and we'll see, we'll take a look at it and see if we have to put, you know, more flex into it, but, uh, Looks pretty good, let me check. So it has to go a little bit more. And again, like I said, you'll notice that this has to flex quite a bit because it's meant to flex. And you can see how much we have it flexing there. And I'll bring it up a little bit. We've got to adjust that one plate. You have to keep an eye on the bottom plates here. If you see start something starting to spit out like this was, okay, then you just reposition it, you know? You don't want to have it uh, shoot across the shop. Okay, let's try it again, again, okay, now we got quite a bit of flex there, huh? This is where you don't want to hear, ba bing Okay, it's looking very good, we just have to go a little bit more, it's right over that D, where I am now. And now we're up to a ton, this is a ton of flex on there, one ton. And you see how much flex that is, quite a bit, right? We are at a post wire brush evaluation got rid of all the rust and uh, you know now I have to figure out where I want to put paint where I want to polish or you know you could see here there's some deep staining rust staining 
and uh, now here about the lettering you know that looks so cool I, I would like to make the background probably painted and let the letters really stand out and um, and then okay so I'm gonna have some lunch now think about it and uh, later on we'll hit the handle with some hand cleaner some gojo or uh, some goop and get that nice and, but right now uh, We'll see. We'll think about it. What I'm going to do, I want to uh, highlight this area here, all these uh, lines. So I'm going to use the uh, a worn disc here. This was a 60 grit, but it's worn out. And I'm going to hit all the uh, uh, lines before I take it to the stationery. we're a couple hours in and you can see how nicely this is coming right I mean it just looks beautiful uh, now that's the original finish that's on there obviously but I don't know what I, this is where you start to get that kind of creative thing I mean it looks nice you know with the black in there but um, forget about red red is is too overpowering a, of a color when you have so much space so it's got to be something that uh, that enhances and it's got to be painted in here and it's kind of I don't know but we're getting there pretty cool right I mean that I don't know I've, you don't usually see these for sale you know even I took off the waffling here okay so let me think about this now as you know I love doing restorations but I hate painting and I more than painting I hate taping and yesterday I spent an hour taping this this uh, hammer for a, a nice reveal, and and then I painted it in candy apple orange, you know, which meant I had a story. It's silver, and then and then three coats of orange, and it, it was coming out great. And then was doing the lettering. I I I hit the area that I wasn't supposed to, and then there's nothing you could do with candy apple. You got to strip it down, strip this hammer down twice before I said that's it. I'm done. So let's check it out. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this hammer looked like before we started. And we are calling this hammer done. And this is a lot. I screwed up with the paint, but then I said I'm just going to go with black. But I didn't want just regular black. I wanted like a crinkle black. And I was able to get that look that I was looking for. That's nice, huh? Doesn't that look nice? And it looks classy, almost like a Japaning. And I left, you know, all the highlights of here of, you know, polished. And uh, this is the backside, obviously. But you know what's amazing is all the different angles. This is a real good practice hammer if you want to learn uh, your your grinding and sanding skills because there must be 20 different angles here between all the different grind, you know, the casting and getting it all, you know, polished out. And uh, it was really, it was a challenge, but it was a lot of fun, except for the paint part. I really uh, didn't enjoy that, but... The hammer came out real nice. It's all polished out now. Uh, they still sell these hammers. Look at that. It looks nice. Huh? That, you know, I, I love when a company puts their, you know, uh, insignia in there like that. And look at that with the black. I just think it's classy. I did the handle with the uh, hand cleaner. I used goop. And then I followed it up with my 50-50 mineral oil and Vaseline. And, and it's just such a beautiful feel to it. But they still sell this hammer. And it, it runs anywhere between 25 and I've seen it as high as $45, you know, new. But uh, it's just interesting, you know. If for, if for us that like tools and interesting concepts and designs, it's supposed to have a tuning fork design that's supposed to reduce vibration. But uh, I didn't try it out. But I took off the waffling because I, I don't like the waffling for me because I do a lot of finishing work and whatnot. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this restoration uh, with this dead on. Uh, it's a 18 inch, I think it's 22 ounces and uh, hammer restoration. So thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Have a nice day. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.